Welcome back. It is episode 82. It is Thursday, December 22nd here in Austin, Texas. I just got back last night from playing at Peaks Dallas Live. Thank you once again to Eric for hosting me. That was a lot of fun. We did lose about $500 on that trip. So we're in the midst of a little bit of downswing here, about $8,500, but nothing to be too worried about. I am now heading on over to Houston. Eddie from Champions Live uh, has invited me and has actually offered to put me up in a hotel, which is very nice of him. So I'll be playing in the 5-5 tonight. That starts in less than six hours. And then tomorrow will either be a 5-10, most likely 5-10-25, or a 10-25, most likely 10-25-50, which is sort of like the first step of high stakes poker. So that'll be a little bit exciting. Throw down 40% of my bankroll on that game. If it does run, which <laughs> is a little bit nerve wracking, but I am just super excited to even be able to have the ability to throw down $20,000 on a poker game. I'm excited. Let's get this drive done. I'll see you guys in Houston. in Houston, Texas. I am here at Champions Club. No smoothie today, got my old fashioned. I just checked out the stream room. It is insanely nice. It looks like a movie production, but I'm super excited. It is 4.30, so got about an hour before I should head down and get started. So maybe we'll just jump into a 1-3 game and fill out whatever paperwork I need to do. Cheers, and here's to an unreal game. Oh, by the way, it is 5-10 today, not 5-5, not five five, so. A little bit higher than we were expecting, but I am here for it. Let's go. Welcome to the Champions Club Hand Histories. First, huge, huge, huge shout out to Champions Club. They put me up in a room. They conked my security deposit box. The food was incredible. Staff were so nice and the production team was all very professional. And this was by far the most fun I've ever had playing poker. Some insane hands. The first stream was a 5-5-10 game, 1500 max, matched the stack. I was in for 1500 in the beginning and I topped off around 6000 at some point. It's a really good table, lots of action, lots of fun. And then day two was either going to be a 5-10 or a 10-25 game, but it was confirmed day of to be a 10-25. The $50 auto straddle went on right away, so pretty high stakes. It's 10x what I normally play. It's a 3k minimum buy-in with an uncapped uh, buy-in. And that would be my first high stakes poker session. I reckon like 25-50 is where it becomes high stakes. So the first raise is going to be over three figures just to play a hand. That's what I used to make in a day. An eight hour shift. <laughs> oh, so, but I think I really held my own in that game. I didn't like the state. I didn't let the stakes or the absurd amounts of money get to me. And I think I played really well. I definitely made a couple mistakes, some pretty questionable ones, but I'm not going to get every hand correct. Uh, with that being said, let's get some hand histories. They're absolutely wild. You are not going to believe some of them. The very first hand, this is around hand eight. I am in the $10 straddle and Jay Wynn, another poker vlogger, very, very, very solid player, opens up to $30 in the hijack. I make a standard defend with a jack seven of clubs. We take a flop. 
And it's a nice one. It's ace, queen, jack with two clubs. So we got bottom pair as well as a flush draw. Uh, Jay Wynn is a very good player and fires out a small over bet of $75 here. Uh, raising doesn't make any sense, especially against this size. So I just toss in the call. Turn is a six of diamonds, a blank. I check it over and anticipating a very large bet on this turn. And it does come. He fires out $400. Our hand is still way too strong to fold, especially against a very capable player. So I toss in the call. We take a river. It is the nine of hearts. I check it over once again, and he really quickly moves all in, which makes sense. It's a pretty big blank. King 10 was already there. I'm not going to have 10, eight. And now we're in a spot. On one hand, our hand is really bad to call with. We block clubs. The jack is kind of irrelevant. It does block ace jack and queen jack, which is nice. But... I think we want a better removal to make this call, but I'm new to the stream. I'm going to make it a point that I am very tough to bluff, and I'm going to toss in the call, especially with him being so polar. It doesn't, we don't really need like absolute hand strength to make calls here, even though I'm going to have a lot of stronger hands. But I toss in the call, and we get the good news. We are good against the 6 4. I love it. That is a play that I would make too. And we're going to double up pretty early this session. In this next hand, we have an open from middle position to $50. Quite large, but I look down at King-10 offsuit in the straddle. I think this is an okay defend, so we toss in the call, we go to a flop. And it comes down quite nice. It's Queen-Jack-9, so we flop the straight. I check it over, and he now fires out a bet of $60, about two-thirds, so definitely want to have some raises here, and the nuts are definitely going to make it in there. I bump things up to 180 the Opponent's thinking it over, thinking it over, and he ultimately says... I don't think you fold if I shove and folds. Damn it. <laughs> so close. Early position has raised up to $45. Hijack puts in the three bet up to $125, and I look down at pocket kings in the small blind. My first premium on a live stream. It only took us four to get a premium, but we got it. So I raise things up to $375, and only the hijack makes a call. And to a flop, so the nice one is queen nine six rainbow. Really good flop, especially when a lot of my opponent's range is going to be like ace queen heavy. So we're going to start with a very small bet here of one quarter, $200, and my opponent makes the call. Turn is not good though. It's the queen of hearts. Really didn't want to see that card. And we're looking around one SPR, so shoving isn't even that bad here. But I think checking it over and protecting my range when I have a hand like ace king just from getting blasted off makes a lot more sense. And we're not really going to get called by worse. So I check it over. My opponent looks at his stack, around 1 SPR, and he fires out a bet of 350. Really like the sizing from him, 40% to get it in on the river as well. But we got kings, we're going to have to make the call. He goes to the river, it is the 7 of clubs. Check it over to my opponent, and he moves all in. I think about it for a little bit, but we really only lose to like ace-queen, maybe some king-queen suited. I think we just got to call it off and pay it, so I toss in the call. We get the good news, we are actually good. And we double up a second time this stream. Let's go. We're off to a great start now. Early position has raised things up to $35. I defend the straddle with five deuce of diamonds. Flop comes down queen, 10, eight, rainbow. We've got the backdoor flush draw, but not a whole lot else. Uh, check in, going to check fold here, but my opponent does check behind. We go to the turn, it is the ace of clubs. Planning to once again execute my plan of check folding. But it checks through once again. We see the river, nine. And we are now playing the board. Gonna have to fire a bluff here, and I don't want to go too big. I fired a very, very small bet of $15 into 80. Opponent thinks it over. It gets through. We get that one through. The knit game is on. Uh, middle position is raised up to $50, and I look down at ace, queen, suited in the cutoff. I throw in the re-raise up to $165. Now the player to my left is in the tank. He's thinking it over, thinking it over. It takes a huge stack of greens and fires out a four bet of $550. This is so big. Uh, folds brown, and I don't think we even have a decision here. I don't believe this one bit. This seems like a hand that just wants to win pre-flop, so I rip it all in for $2,500, expecting to get a fold quite often. But my opponent does find the call with a pocket 10, so we are going to a flop one-time dealer. It comes down 5442 diamonds. Pretty good. The turn, another five. River, the deuce, and we don't get there, and we are going to lose this pot. 
We pick up Pocket Jax's hand, raise it up in middle position to $25. We get a call from the button, and now Jaywin puts in the squeeze up to $150. Uh, I think we're a little bit too deep to consider four betting this, so I just call and button makes the call as well. We go to a flop three ways of King Jack 5 2 Diamonds. Beautiful middle set. Now Jaywin checks it over to me, and I have noticed that he does a lot of protecting his check back range. So I don't think he's necessarily just going to have like terrible hands here, but I do want to let him catch up a little bit here. So I'm going to trap here and check back the turn, or sorry, the flop, and button checks as well. Turn is the Ace of Spades, a pretty nice card, and now Jay Wynn fires out a bet of 225. It makes no sense to raise here on a card that's way better for him, so I'm just going to toss in the call here. We go to the river, it is the Ace of Clubs. Pretty nice card. Opponent is now sizing up a bet, I'm planning to go all in. And then he fires out a massive over bet of 1600, and it's kind of gross now. So at first, I was like, there's no way I'm folding, so we're going to get rid of that. But do I want to call, or do I want to raise here? And I think it's pretty close. I think it's really close here. So he can definitely have Ace-5 and Ace-Jack suited. Both those hands will play the exact same way here. And he could definitely have some Ace-Kings, some Pocket Kings, and some Pocket Aces, but I discounted those pretty heavily, because I think all of those do want to bet the flop very high frequency. It's a King-High flop three ways and it's quite wet so I think we are going to lose to some ace jacks and some ace five suited sometimes and we're just going to be okay with it and I think that a lot of his range is going to be ace queen off suit or ace ten suited so there are more combos of that than there are of ace five and ace jack suited and if he did trap with a hand like aces kings or ace king then good for him but I am all in we are going for it I fire out a pretty much a min raise up to three thousand dollars Jaywin hates it like, this is just such a gross swap for Ace-Queen to be in. But he does make the call. We do get paid the hand, and we are winning a pretty sizable six or $7,000 pot here. So, cut off his raise to $75, and I look down at Ace-King offsuit in the big blind. I 3-bet up to $300, my opponent makes the call. We go heads up to a flop of 8-6-4, all clubs. Pretty nice flop for our exact hand, but pretty terrible for our range, so I'm going to check 100% here. And my opponent now fires out a bet of 250. It's a pretty big bet, so I I don't know, something's starting to feel off here. So I'm just going to call, keep his range a little bit wide. I don't want to just narrow it down to just nut flushes. So I think raising's a little bit silly. So I just toss in the call. And it's a turn, it's the nine of diamonds. Check it over, and now he fires out a pretty large bet of 850. And I'm getting really suspicious now. I really think his hand, this kind of feels like ace of clubs with the queen. And on any non-queen rivers, I'm just going to hero it off. So, I toss in the call. River. God dang queen of hearts. Uh, I thought that this river was just going to go check, check, and he's going to roll over ace, queen, and win. But I check it over, and I fires out a bet of $2,000 into 2840. And I'm getting really suspicious now. I don't think ace, queen is going to go for thin value here. Like, if you had ace of clubs, queen of, queen of diamonds or something, I just don't think he's going 2k here. So I think it over for a bit. I think calling is out of the question. But his hand really feels like pair plus flush draw. Just some kind of weird hand. I just don't think he's that strong here. And I don't think he's got a flush. I don't think these sizings indicate a flush. So I'm going to do something crazy here. And I just rip it all in for 3800 Less than a min raise behind. Because whoever bluffs these spots? No one. Unfortunately for me, my opponent just has a runner runner straight and snaps it off and side calls. And we're going to get stacked that hand. Yeah. So we don't really pick up any interesting hands for the next hour and a half, but now we can pick up ace 10 of clubs in the hijack. Raise things up to $25, and the player to my left now three bets up to 80. I did a very low frequency randomization for a four bet. Landed on four bet this time, so 240 to go. My opponent makes the call, we're taking a flop, and it comes down king, eight, six, with two diamonds. Pretty good flop for me, so I'm going to start with a small bet here of 150. I think I like even smaller, like 125 here, and make it a quarter pot. But uh, whatever. Um, my opponent does make the call. We're going to the turn, it is the six of clubs. My hand is just trash now. Um, bluffing doesn't make much sense, we don't block much. So I'm just going to check this one and give up. My opponent does check behind, so we're taking a river, it is the jack of spades. I'm going to check once again, try to get the showdown. Opponents have a 9 of 8, fires out about a 550. I briefly think about hero calling, but 
I just think he's got too many like king jacks, pocket jacks, stuff like that. So I don't think we can hero call here. I toss in the fold. And what do you know? He had top set. So nice fold, Sam. Just a few hands later, the Nick game is on. I have thrown on the $25 straddle. Early position raises it up to $75. Cut off a small blind call and I defend ace three off in the straddle. Flop comes down ace six nine with two clubs. I check it over in early position, fires out one third for $105. Cut off makes a call and nothing to do here but call as well. We get a pretty nice turn. It's the ace of diamonds improving us to trips and making it quite a bit less likely that our opponent does have us beat. I check it over once again and my opponent now fires out a pretty sizable bet of $425. Cut off folds and now it's back on us and with so many draws available, we're just going to have to peel one more, but I'm going to fold almost any river. So I toss in the call. We go to the river. It is the deuce of clubs. The front door flush gets in. I am definitely folding now. Um, I check it over. Opponent thinks about it for a bit and just checks it behind. So I think there may be some chance I'm good, but when I announce ace, he rolls over the ace jack and that one is not going our way. The very next shuffle, I'm once again in the straddle, this time only the $10 one. Middle position is raised up to 50, button calls, and I defend with jack 10 off suit. We go to a flop of king 7 4 with two clubs. I check it over, the original razor checks it, and now the button fires out a half pot bet of $75. I'm going to attack this sizing right away. I do have some back doors, so I raise up to 225, and only the button makes the call. Turn is a six of diamonds. Look over to stack, we're looking around 2 or 3 SPR, so I want to bet around 60 to 80% here. And I'm going to fire out just one more bet. I'm going to give up on all non-club rivers, but I will jam anything that is a club. So I fire it once again for $450. My opponent thinks it over. And then releases. Uh, we have to show to get rid of our nit button, but that one feels nice to get rid of it early. Pick up the 8-6 offsuit in the cutoff. A little bit of a wide open, but I raise things up to $25. Big blind and straddle both make the call. Go to a flop of king, queen, four with two spades. Pretty good flop for my range, so when it checks to me, I fire a bet of 25, and only the big blind makes the call. We're going to the turn. It is the seven of hearts. We do pick up a gut shot. Checks it over once again, and I just want to clear out any of his, you know, less than king X type hands. So I fire an over bet of 225, and he snap calls us. Planning to go pretty big on a river, but the river is the six of clubs. We do pick up some showdown value, and I think that we just beat, you know, Combo draws, jack 10, 10, 9, those kind of things with the flush draw. So I'm just going to check this one back. And unfortunately for us, he managed to hold on with the queen, jack. Nice hand, Bobby. The Nick game is back on. I am once again in the straddle. Cutoff is raised up to $35. Small blind is called. I look down at 9, 5 of diamonds and toss in the call as well. We go to a flop of jack 6, 4 with one diamond. So we got the backdoor flush draw as well as a backdoor straight draw. And I do something a little bit interest unorthodox, I'd say here. And I decide to lead for one third pot, $35. I just think that I've got all the two pairs here and my opponents really aren't going to have too many besides six, four suited. But there's only two of those left. So yeah, I just think I have way more two pairs here. So I'm going to go ahead and lead here. I don't know if it's right. It's probably not. But both my opponents make the call. We get a beautiful eight of diamonds on the turn. We turn the straight flush gut shot draw. And I'm going to fire out a big bet. Out of position, I usually don't do over bets. But i um, just going to fire out for pot here. So 210. And cutoff makes the call. And to the river, it is the six of hearts. I think I just got to give this one up here. I don't think he's going to fold a jack. So I check it over. He fires out some bet. I think like 2x pot or something. I got nine highs. So in the muck you go. We are still trying to lose our nit button. But we pick up king jack offsuit in the cutoff. Raise things up to $25. Button makes the call. Now Big Blind puts in the squeeze up to 130 Pretty fair price, I'd say. So I toss in the call, and so does the button. We're going three ways to this flop, which comes out really nice. Jack, eight, four with two clubs. We've got top pair, really good kicker. And now Bobby checks it over to me. Uh, I decide to get a little bit tricky here and throw in the check. It's nice to have some strong hands in your check range as well. Button now fires out a bet of one third, $150. Uh, Big Blind makes the call, and now it's back on me. For this sizing, we definitely have to raise for value here, get some protection. So I bump things up to $600. Button thinks about it for a bit and then folds. And the original razor also tosses in the folds. We get rid of our knit button. Uh, I think they rabbit hunted. The runout would have actually been five on the turn and river jack. So I would have had top trips versus uh, the button set. So we, we dodged that one. 
buckle up for this one, ladies and gents. The splash pot is on, so the way it works, the knit game finishes, and then the person who loses it puts in $200 into the pot, and we play for it for the next hand. Now, I've not lost the knit game yet, but I also haven't won a splash pot, and I'm determined to do so before the stream ends. So, early position has raised up to $30. With $200 in the middle, we can call any two, I'm pretty sure. So, 7-4 offsuit, I toss in the call. Now, small blind squeezes it up to $300. Early position calls, and... I want to win this pot. I'm going to call and I'm going to bluff it off. So I toss in the call. We go to a flop of a six, five rainbow. We flop an open ender. That is insane for a hand like this. Original razor now checks it over. Uh, the early position player now fires out about a half pot bet of $500. I think raising is going to be a little bit too wild and we might just get jammed on. So I'm just going to toss in the call here. Original razor folds. We're off to the turn and it's a good one. It's a seven of clubs. So we do pick up a pair. Uh, pot's about 1945. My opponent once again fires out a pretty sizable bet this time, about 75% for $1,400. Uh, we do pick up quite a bit of equity here against a hand like Ace King, Ace Queen. Right, we got some trips, open ender, as well as two pair outs. So once again, I'm going to make the call. Hands to the river with nearly $5,000 in the pot. One street left of action. I have seven, four off. River comes down the. All right, guys, if I hit. You all have to subscribe and like the video. If I don't hit and I bluff it off, you have to do the same. The river is the three of hearts. We fucking get there. My opponent now thinks it over and then checks it over. I am really hoping he's not giving up. I think about it for a bit. There's only one size in the use here. If he's got eight, nine, he's got eight, nine, whatever. I fire out all in for 5,000. $305 and put my opponent into the tank. I do not envy his spot with a set of fives there. That is a rough spot. But he thinks about it for quite a while. I did fire off quite a few bluffs against him. And ultimately he flicks in a 1k chip. I sheepishly show my hand. <laughs> and it is good for a $15,000 dollar pot the largest i have ever played by more than 2x that is insane fifteen thousand dollar pot going our way we played two pots over ten thousand dollars today we lost one we won this one these are some insane pots the very next shuffle we pick up pocket aces uh early position raises it up to sixty dollars i throw in the re-raise up to 200 and my opponent makes a call we go to an okay flop of 10, 9, 4, 2 clubs. Not the best flop for me, and I do want to have some traps in here. So aces are going to be my main trap hand. So I check it back. We take a turn. It is the ace of diamonds, a card that's going to be really good for me, especially after I check the flop. Well, my opponent now fires out a bet of 250. Uh, just going to call here, keep his range wide if he's getting crazy. So I toss in the call. And we see a pretty safe river in the queen of hearts. My opponent wastes no time at all and just ships it all in. It's one SPR. I got top set, so I chuck it in. And unfortunately, my opponent did have the king jack. That one is not going to go our way, but we win a pretty hefty um, amount this session. I did play a little bit off stream, and I think I broke even. So I think I went about $4,000 today. Yeah, nice. All right, guys, it is time. It is December 22nd, about 5.30 p.m. Just about to head down to the stream. It is confirmed to be a 10.25 with a 50 dollar straddle this is gonna be my first high stakes poker game it's just a little bit surreal and i'm extremely nervous <laughs> i've got twenty thousand dollars with me that's only 400 big blinds that's just two medium-sized coolers and it's gone but i'm still super excited you know six months ago i played my first two five game and now here i am playing something 10 times that size albeit it's a little bit under rolled but Anyways, we're gonna go down and battle. We're just gonna play my gonna play my heart out, do my best, and see what happens. And honestly, I'm just really happy to even be here, be able to play this because I left in September with 11,000 USD in the bankroll. Three months later, built it up, and I said if I made it to 50k, I'd play in the Lodge live stream. Got crushed for 4k. Then I played in the Peaks live stream. Got uh, got kind of crushed, but only lost 500. Last night we won $5,000, so feeling good about it. And today. 10, 25, 50. 
Wish me luck, guys. Let's fucking go. Here it is, high stakes poker, 10, 25, 50. The first hour has been quite slow for me. I got cold four bet twice and had to fold. Then I picked up pocket queens, raised it up, and got no action. So that was my first hour of play, not much going on. And I'm only in this game for $3,000 a minimum. I'm waiting until I get a little bit comfier first before I add on. I've got two reloads of 10K with me, and I will add them on eventually. Just, just waiting to get a little bit comfy with the game, get a feel for it, so. But... I do pick up aces now, about an hour into the game, and I raise it up in middle position up to 125. Hijack and button make the call, and now big blind squeezes to 650. Gotta love it. Falls back to me, I look at my stack, I've only got around 2100 behind, so I think ripping it here is just the play, so I am all in. Unfortunate for Adrian, he has pocket kings. He tosses in the call, go to a really clean looking board, and we do get our first double up. Pretty unfortunate to only win, like... 40 big blinds with aces versus kings, but can't really complain. We're up. We're up. Not too long later, we got a limp to our left, and we raised up the ace eight of spades in middle position to 225. Folds around to a small blind who puts in a three bet all the way up to 700. Folds back to me. This is a very reasonable price, so I toss in the call with a suited ace, and we head to a flop of ace four, deuce two hearts. Looks pretty good for us so far. Uh, West now bets out for $400. Nothing to do here but call. Uh, let's take a turn. It is the five of diamonds, so there is now a one-liner to a straight, but neither of us are really going to have a three. West now fires out a bet of $1,500, and I just think he's just running out of bluffs here. I think we're going to have to let this one go. Kind of hurts the full top pair, but I think it is the right play, so I just send it into the muck. We are down to the final two people with the nit bun. It is Justin and Jay Wind who need to get rid of it, otherwise they have to pay an $850 bounty. Uh, folds around to Justin, who just open rips for about $2,500, about 50 big blinds. I think he'd be doing this very wide with hands like Ace-10, etc. that we just dominate, so I don't think about it too long. I just toss in the call. Everyone else folds, and we are heads up in this 5k pot, and flop comes down. The queen in the window. Love to see it. Turn is clean. River is also clean, and we are doubling up there and picking up a nice pot. Just a few hands later, the splash pot is now on, which means there's $850 of dead money in the middle just waiting for me to win it. Um, early position is limped. I look down at queen four suited. I'm pretty much going to limp my entire range here, so I toss in the call for $50. And now it folds around to Wes, who bumps it up to $900. Limper now folds, and I'm here to battle for these splash pots, and this is a pretty decent price. We only need 33% equity here, and we're in position. So queen four suited... I think this is a no-brainer call, so I toss it in. We head to a flop of 858 eight rainbow. So we got the backdoor flush draw as well as the backdoor straight draw. Uh, West now fires out a one-third bet of 700 into round 2k. I'm gonna decide to float here. Maybe we can steal it on some runouts. So I toss in the call. We go to the turn. It is the Queen of Hearts improving us to top pair. We do lose to a few hands, but I'm not too worried, especially when West bets out again for 1500. At this point, I think a lot of his value hands are gonna want to start checking, but I haven't played with him much, and he is a very competent player, so maybe I'm wrong about that. But I'm going to decide to call down on any brick rivers. Like a nice little two on the river would be sweet. So I toss in the call. The river is the queen of clubs. Unfortunate for Wes. He moves all in for 3,000 effective. I call, and we win this $12,000 pot. And we are now up around $9,350 in the first hour and a half of the stream. Things are going well. Let's keep going. This is just two hands later. We are under the gun and raise up the queen jack off suit up to $125. Holds around to the button who does put in the three bet up to $375. Strather now cold calls and 
I think now we just got to toss in the call with all this dead money. Not dead money, but with all the extra money in there. I toss in the call. We head to a flop of queen, four, deuce with two spades. Pretty nice. I check it over, and the original three better now makes it $400. Now the cold caller makes the call and is back on me. And I just didn't feel good about this hand. I just thought the cold caller is going to have so much queen X here that I'm just going to be dead. And it's going to be so tough to win this hand. As well, the button bent to three people. And I raised from early position. I don't think he's doing this wide. So I made a really tight fold here with top pair. And I'm very disappointed to see how wrong it was. But I don't know. I went my read. It was wrong. It happens. The very next hand, uh, middle position is raised up to 125, big blind is called, and I decide to defend my straddle with a 9-6 off suit. Flop comes down queen, jack, 9 with 2 spades, and action checks all the way through. Uh, we bank our 2 pair on the turn in the 6 of hearts, so I fired a small bet here of 150, and only the original razor makes the call. Hands to the river, it is the 8 of spades, a pretty rough card. Any 10 is now a straight, and, uh, and as well the flush does get there, so... Not loving it, but I still think there's a little bit of value to be had against a hand like Ace Jack or the Ace of Spades, something like that. So I fired a half pot bet of 325, and now he's in the tank and throws in a very big raise up to $2,000. This is super polarized, so he's no longer repping straights. He's not saying he has 10 or King 10 or something like that, and he's basically saying he either has the Ace of Spades or he's got the Nut Flush. So I'm thinking it over for a bit. And usually the wheel aces would be betting this flop and then the higher ones would be uh, checking like ace king of spades. So with the queen of spades out there, it kind of eliminates a couple possibilities. So we could still have ace jack with the, uh, with the spades, but he could also have a hand like ace king with the ace of spades or ace jack with the ace of spades. And ultimately, I think if he's just going to be doing it too much with the ace of spades, I think I can call this as I'm just not going to have too much relevant removal in this hand. So, yeah, I just think he's got a little bit too many bluffs here, but who knows? I toss in the call, and we do get shown the ace, five of spades. Very nice check on the flop. Very nice raise on the river. Maximum value, and we're going to lose that pot. Just a couple hands later, we pick up ace, eight off suit in the small blind and raise things up to 150. Big blind makes the call, and we're going heads up to this flop of ace, four, four with two diamonds. Definitely want to have some strong check hands in our range as well. This isn't a great board for small blinds, so check, check, it goes, and we're off to the turn. It is the three of diamonds. Didn't want to see that either, so I think it's still okay to put this hand in our check range once in a while. Also makes it harder to bluff, so I toss in the check. My opponent fires up for 125. Nothing to do but make the call. See a pretty good river, the jack of spades. I check it over once again. My opponent fires out for 400. We put this hand in our checkback range to call down, so I toss in the call, and it is good. We are picking up that pot. The Nick game is back on. We have an early position raised to 125 and three callers before I look down. Ace King in the straddle. What a dream spot. I squeeze things up to $800, folds all the way around, and the big blind is the only player that makes the call. We're heads up to a flop of 444. What a great flop. He checks it over. I'm going to start with a very small bet of 300. My opponent really quickly makes a call. Friends, the turn is the three of spades. SPR is looking around one, so I want to bet around 40% here. The graphics are off. Um, like, he may call with a hand like ace-queen, and if he does have a pocket pair and we get it in, it is what it is, so. Uh, I'm going to fire a bet of $900 here. A little bit around 40%. Uh, lucky for me, my opponent just had the king-queen off, so we are going to pick up that pot. In this next hand, the splash pot is on. There is $500 in the middle, and I limp under the gun with a seven of spades. Folds around to Outlaw, who bumps it up to $400, and I make the call. We're going heads up to this flop. It's a good one. Seven, five, three with two hearts. I check it over to him. He fires out a pretty sizable bet of about $550. It's about 66% pot. Uh, with the ace kicker, definitely more inclined to do raising than with a lower one. So I'm going to go ahead and raise this one up. And I make it 1750 to go. My opponent thinks it over for a bit and then tosses in the call. Turn is the king of diamonds. If you have a check raise range on the flop that consists of top pairs, almost any card over a seven is going to be a huge, huge, huge check uh, to your range, especially the king. So 
King of Diamonds, it is almost a range check, so I'm going to check it over to him. And he fires out a bet of about $2,700. It's too soon to fold just yet. He could still have some flush draws. So I toss in the call for $2,700, and we go to a river. It is the 10 of spades. No help to us. I check it over. My opponent thinks about it for a bit, and then checks behind. We get the bad news in the Ace King. That one's unfortunate. That was a pretty big pot, nearly $10,000. That one is not going our way. Holds around to us on the button with pocket tens. I raise it up to $150 and only the straddle defends. Flop comes down jack 6-3 with two clubs. He checks it over to me and this hand's a little bit too middling. I think pocket tens do want to bet here, but I decide to check this time. Turn is the four of hearts. Opponent now fires out for about two thirds for 225. Nothing to do here but call. We're going to river. It is the five of spades, not a fun card. There's now a four liner to a straight. And he once again fires out another bet of 225. Ah, uh, that sucks. I think he's just got way too many two pairs here that he could go for value. Like, even bottom two just can print money just going for value here. So, I make a very disciplined fold. And glad to see that that one was correct. The knit game is back on. Folds around to the button and raises it up to 125. Small blind and big blind call. And I look down at king nine offsuit in the straddle. Side to squeeze here, I make it $750 to go. Button folds, small blind folds, and now it's back on the straddle. And by the way, the graphics are wrong here. Uh, Nerdy actually does cover me. I think he just added on some chips. I am the effective stack with $7,000 here. But now he puts in the back raise up to $1,800. I didn't even notice it at this at first, so when he put in the chips, I just checked my cards and I was waiting for a flop. And then I was like, oh shit, he raised. Also, we were having quite a few tequilas and the tequilas are getting to me at this point. But I'm thinking it over, and I just don't think he's doing this with any strong hand. You know, I just kept thinking it over, and I just didn't believe. I was a non-believer, so I decided to go with my hand and throw in the five bet all in for $7,000. We do not get snap called. And now my opponent's in the tank, and he's thinking it over, thinking it over. He sees that I have a nip button. Yeah, yeah, I do have that. <laughs> He's thinking it over. And eventually decides on a fold. Oh. That was a, that might have been our biggest bluff yet. Glad it worked out. All right, this is another big one. We pick up pocket aces under the gun, raise up to $125, button and big blind make the call. So we're going three ways to this flop of 443 with two clubs. Checks to me, and this is not a great board for an under the gun range, so I'm going to range check here. Button now fires out a small bet of 150. Big blind gets out of the way, and now it's back on me, and against a small size, and we do want to have some check raises in here. I think aces with the ace of clubs have the backdoor flush as backup does make it in there more often, so I go ahead for the check raise versus a small size. I always go about 4.5x here, so 675 to go. My opponent thinks it over, and then tosses in the call. Turn is the Jack of Diamonds. I look over to stack. We're looking around 3-ish SPR. And guys, the tequilas were really getting to me now. Uh, I meant to bet around 80% pot here, but I bet 60% for whatever reason. So I fired again for $1,100. Opponent thinks it over. and makes the call again. River is the Deuce of Hearts. So 5-6 did get there, which I was a little bit worried about. And I'm in the tank now. And I think for about two, maybe three minutes... And I came really close to just ripping it in for value here. Like really, really, really close. Because I think he's just going to put me on air and just hero me off with like pocket sevens or something. But something just felt off in my gut. And I was like, I, I'm going to check this over. And maybe he's got some bluffs that he can shove as well. So I checked it over. And he wastes like no time at all. Like five seconds. It just ships it all in. Which kind of makes sense after I tank for so long. And I'm not loving this anymore. You know, something shifted. I was gonna go, I was gonna go all in for value, and now I just don't feel good about this. And I'm thinking it over, and I just feel like he's got a four here every time. Like just in my head, I was like, he's just gonna roll over a four. And I thought it over for a very long time. This was like four or five minutes, and by the end of it, I was leaning fold. So I said, look, I'll randomize one and four, and I'll make the call. So. Adrian, to his credit, does believe me when I say that. He rolls over his hand, so we see the bad news right away in the 6-4 of hearts. So I shuffle up my cards, and I say, if I pull the ace of spades twice, 
I will call. And I chuck one of my cards over to Doodle to peel it. He peels it, rolls it over. It is the Ace of Clubs, so we are safe. And we managed to make a pretty big fold there. Oh, that one, that one really hurt, but I'm glad that we found the right fold there. So we are now playing 10, 25, 50, 100. And now Wes has now raised it up to $300 in early position. Folds around to me in the blinds. I looked down at King, Queen, off suit, and he has effectively about 30 big blinds here. So I think the play here is mostly fold, and then sometimes just rip it in as a bluff. And this is one of those times. I move all in. It's only about 60 big blinds with the straddle. All in to go. Folds around, and Wes was just a little bit loose there, and we do pick up about $500 in that pot. All right, you guys, this is Street Poker 101, a.k.a. How Not to Play Poker. So, the knit game is on, and I open the 5-4 offsuit in the hijack up to 125. Only the big blind defends. So you go to a really good flop for my range. It's Queen, Jack, 10, Rainbow. This is a really, really good board for imposition. I just have all the nutted hands here. So I'm going to fire a very small bet of $25. There, there's a bit of drinking uh, happening as well, so <laughs> I do a really small bet here which immediately gets raised up to $250. And I'm just not believing this. Like, I still have the aces, the kings, queens, jacks, tens, all the two pairs, as well as the nut straight, which is the... I can only have ace king, and he can't. So I'm going to toss in the call and probably try to steal it on the turn. The turn is the ten of hearts, so a pretty interesting card. Uh, it does introduce a flush draw, but if he did have some value, like queen ten or jack ten, he's going to feel pretty good about his hand now. But he checks it over, and... I called the flop raise to take it away on the turn. So I fire out a bet of $450. And we get hit with a check raise again up to $1,600. I think about this for a bit. And look, guys, we turned a two pair draw. And this is pretty much the top of our range. So we're just going to have to call here. So I toss in the call. We're off to the river. It is the seven of clubs. My opponent now checks it over and... Like, we got five high, we got a shove for value here, so I am all in for $5,000. Just praying that he doesn't have jack-10 or queen-10 here. Luckily, he does not, and he does fold, and we take down a massive pot with five high. That is street poker. All right, we're winding down. It's the last few hands of the stream. We are now playing 10, 25, 50, 100. Cutoff has raised up to $250. Small blind is called. And I looked at a pocket. Jack's in the big blind. Definitely going to put in the squeeze here. I make it $1,200 to go. It doesn't have to be too, too big here because with the effect of stacks getting cut down by the straddle, it's not too bad. Uh, cutoff makes a fold, and now it's back on the small blind, and he's thinking it over, and he's about to fold. So I take one of my cards and flip over the jack, and then he tosses in the call. <laughs> so we're playing some poker now. Uh... For whatever reason, he also shows me a card. He shows me the 10. So, feeling pretty good about my jacks now. We go to a flop of King 7 7 Rainbow. Really good board for imposition. So, when he checks it over, I fired a bet of one third, and we do take it down. So, not a, not a huge pot in terms of big blinds, but still a pretty massive pot in terms of dollars. <laughs> These games are huge. We are playing 10, 25, 50, 100, 200. Folds round to the big blind who tosses in the call. I look down at just one of my cards. I see the ace and I bump things up to $700. And I let him know I've only seen one. Folds back round. He thinks it over for a bit and then tosses in the call. We're heading up to the flop of King 7 5 Rainbow. And he looks at the board for a second and then leads out for a thousand. And I'm very drunk at this point, okay? I've been having way too many whiskeys. And I just tell him, take it back. We'll throw in, I think, $400 and run it. And he agrees to it. So, pretty sweet. Uh, we head to the turn. It's clean. River clean. I roll it over. And the ace high is good. And we do even have bottom pair with a five as well. I definitely consumed way too much liquor on the stream. Just having some fun. Some fun and out of nowhere it just hit me. Uh, I did play a little bit off of stream. And I think I lost about $3,000. And I don't remember how. So. But... I had an absolute blast playing poker here. It was so much fun. Thank you once again to Champions Club, and I'll see you guys in a bit. That is going to wrap up episode 82. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really enjoyed that stream, and I cannot wait for my next high-stakes stream. The numbers. On day one, we won $5,075, and on day two, 
4980 for a grand total of $10,055. The bankroll is really coming along now. Chuck us a few likes, and I'll see you all in 2024 for our best year yet.